listening to the IELTS podcast. Learn from tutors and ex-examiners who are masters of IELTS preparation. Your host, Ben Worthington. Hello there, IELTS students. In this tutorial, Robert Buckinghamshire and myself, Ben Worthington, are going to tell you what to do to get a band seven or higher for the IELTS speaking. In this tutorial, it's going to be mainly about vocabulary. And then next week, we're going to look at one all about the grammar for a band seven in the speaking. But before we start, I want to just say a big thank you to our sponsor, Elsa. Elsa is the pronunciation app that you can install on your iPhone or your Android. And with this app, what you can do is you can get pronunciation feedback instantly. So if you've learned a new word, um, and we're going to show you how you can learn new words and different like variation, conjugations, collocations, and all of that. And if you do learn a new word, you can speak it into the app and you can get feedback on whether you have pronounced it correctly. And it's not only that, there's like full modules to work through. There's over 3000 lectures. And it's just a fast, handy way. So if you're interested in that, you can go to ieltspodcast.com forward slash Elsa, and that will take you to a special offer for IELTS podcast listeners, where you can get the whole uh, pro pack for a year for about $26.99, or even the lifetime pack for about $75, $74.25, sorry. So that's a discount of 85%. Uh, so have a look at that if you need some feedback on your speaking. So without further ado, uh, let's get started with today's tutorial. So Robert, as your time as an examiner, um, what can you tell us about vocabulary for the IELTS speaking test? Okay, so hey, how are you, Ben? Uh, good to talk to you. All good, thank you. All good. Sorry, I was a bit hasty today, I know. Nah. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm all right, thanks. It's because, you, you know... Christmas is coming. We're all in a rush. We're all in a rush. And I, that Elsa sounds really. I thought you were talking about some a actress or something called Elsa. Who is this Elsa? No, 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 no. <laughs> there, there, is an there, there is there is a cartoon actress called Elsa. I think she did ah, Frozen. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And I think if anybody's got a kid, they'll probably be more than uh, knowledgeable about Elsa. I, I just uh, Googled Elsa and that cartoon came up and I was like, okay, wrong, wrong search results. Yeah. <laughs> He's searching. Yeah. <laughs> so, it sounds great, actually, because it, it, it all ties into what we're talking about today, I think, you know, about vocabulary, because, you know, I mean, let, let, let's face uh -huh. it. I mean, when, when we study another language, if it's English or if it's us trying to get by in another language whatever that might be i mean we can always recognize an awful lot of words with with a lot of exposure to that language and and, and obviously even in our in our own language we always understand a lot more than we actually use you know we recognize a lot of stuff words we would never use in in context but yeah. When, when we're talking about this exam, I mean, it's, a, it's an exam, isn't it? And we've got to find ways to get around it and get through it and get a good grade in it. So we've got to be, you know, practical. We've got to be pragmatic. I mean, what mm -hmm. will get me a seven or, or a higher than a seven? And looking at it from the other point of view, as I always try to, you know, what is the examiner looking for? He's yeah. got his, he or she has got his descriptors. And, and if we look through the the descriptors for the lexical resource band, as it's called, it means mm -hmm. two or three things really stand out. The first thing is, okay, the topic itself. Now that is not necessarily random because we know more or less the, the, the breadth the, 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 of all the possible topics that may come up in general terms, but we never know exactly what's going to come up when we're in that exam room. So what it really means when we're talking about topic is, are you really able to talk about both familiar topics and also what they're calling unfamiliar topics, things that you don't know very much about? I mean, is your vocabulary wide enough to discuss any of that wide range of topics that may come up in, in, in the exam and, and talk about the, these things with a, a certain degree of confidence that means that you hardly make 
any errors when you're using your vocabulary? Mm. Well, well, let's discuss what that means in a second. But yeah. then if you can do those things, we're talking about at least a seven or even an eight. Yeah? Uh-huh. The other thing that the examiner is looking for, and this is very odd when we, we when we think about it really is is your ability to use what they call less common vocabulary and, and idiomatic expressions um, mm. and also of course to use what we call collocations correctly you know the, the, those words that always go together I mean your classic yeah. example is you know the make and do isn't it you know you make trouble but you do your best <laughs> you do your work but you make a cup of tea you know what what's yeah. the difference well because that's the way it is we say you know I mean, <laughs> don't ask too many questions just learn it and get on with it it's either make or do yeah yeah so you've got to know which words combine with other ones so um, yeah, well, and I'll just sorry, just interrupt. I'm, uh, yeah. Personally, I'm a massive fan of collocations because they can. Oh, wow. Because I mean, if I remember correctly, just slip on in there. Well, yeah, it's more yeah. of an expression. Ah. If I remember correctly, uh, you speak Spanish as well, don't you? Is that's that right? right. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yes, 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 yes. And like. Um, I guess when you were learning Spanish, I mean, if you're anything like me, I learned a few just to kind of like um, make it look as though I'd learned certain t um, uh, certain tenses, you know? Uh, yeah. And if I, for example, uh, si lo sepas, you know, to mm -hmm. use the subju mm -hmm. subjunctive like that, I didn't really oh. grasp it, but I knew if I could use that phrase, I could pass as though I knew it. And it ultimately, I thought, raised my like ability, or at least it sounded as though I knew it, even though I didn't know all the ins and outs, but I could get away with coming off as though I knew it. And I think um, another good thing about the collocations is that you, because they come together and you use them together, the word, you start speaking a little bit faster and you yep. start sounding a little bit more like coherent and more fluent because That's they're right. all one after the other. And I think it's like a real quick and easy way to, to boost. And yeah, do you use them when you, cuando tú hablas castellano or espanol? Uh, oh, yo creo que sí. <laughs> <laughs> I go lo posible. I go lo posible. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think so. Uh, you know, it, I find it was all of, at first a question of picking up a, a lot of phrases, picking up, you know, the combinations of words and, 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 and feeding them back and testing it out. And, and you know, with the, you know, um, um, things like the subjunctive, I mean, oh, that's a headache, isn't it? I mean, I've never, oh, actually, yeah. I'm, 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 I admit it, I'm lazy. I've never actually sat down and studied any of that stuff. I, I, I just... <laughs> Got by listening in the street and picking it up like that. I mean, yeah, and, and, and working it out and, and saying, oh yeah, that's the way you do that. That's the way you get around things by saying that. You know, and yeah, that, that, that's the way the people use it here. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. So that, that that's going to get me through. That will get me through. Um, yeah. you, you know, to some extent, it's a question of you know, um, uh, of course, the, the the width of your vocabulary, how wide your vocabulary is, and also, you know, with these collocations and the idioms, as you're saying, I mean, it makes you sound more natural. It makes you sound a bit like a native speaker, even if yeah. people know that you're not. So, and and that tells us a little bit about you know the depth of 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 your language. And but got, the other thing I'd like to mention, of course, about the the, the, the exam is that. Um, it's impossible to, to, to be able to talk about everything under the sun. I mean, there's going to be times when um, uh, we don't know the words for it. I mean, I remember once, oh, it was so many years ago when I first came uh, here and, and tried to speak in Spanish. I, I, I wanted to buy um, uh, something for shaving, a, a razor, you know, like not uh -huh. an electric one. They don't work with me, but, you know, just a, you know, look, look, a wet razor, you know, razor with soap yeah, and stuff. Yeah. And, um, and, and I, I learned the word to, to, to shave, which was afetar. And so I said to this guy that I'd met, I said, um, I said, mira, uh, ¿cómo se dice en español una máquina de afetar? And he said, así es. He said, oh, oh, what, sorry? <laughs> a, a razor, you know, a machine to shave. And he said, oh, that's the way we use it here, una máquina de, de afetar. Said, oh, oh, wow. 
okay. <laughs> I, I, I guessed it and got it right. You know? <laughs> yeah, it, it's funny how like certain words, they'll, when you're learning the language and you learn a certain word, and sometimes if you're lucky, it comes with a whole story behind it as like That's how true. you um yeah how you like actually learned it like I, I remember playing football sorry we're going off on a tangent here but don't worry we're going to get back straight on to <laughs> in a second but I remember when I was playing football and uh-huh. um the ball just we was five aside and the ball just flew past me and then went out yeah. and then I shouted across the 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 whole pitch I was like um what was it now um no me toco no me toco. Like uh-huh. I wanted okay, to say it, it I didn't, didn't, t- touch, didn't me, touch me. But yeah, I ended yeah, up yeah. shouting out to everybody <laughs> around saying, I don't touch myself, you know. <laughs> 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 so I totally knew, like uh, you know, now I know like um not, now I could say it better and I could say, you know, without having little innuendos. But <laughs> uh, because of that incident, that embarrassment that I now know, you know, and it's stuck in my brain and it's, uh, yeah, I'm never going to make that mistake again. (laughs) (laughs) But of course, I mean, it's it's what I think the word they use so often, and it's hard to say what it really means, is paraphrasing, isn't it? I mean, how can you say something in other words? I can describe what I'm looking for. I describe what I want, but I don't know the exact word for it, but I want to explain it. And and that's the other thing that... that, um, Mm. Uh, the examiner is looking out for so it's three things really I mean can you talk about topics Have, is your vocabulary wide enough to be able to discuss things do you know any particular vocabulary uh, any uh, less common vocabulary and particularly sort of idiomatic things I mean I, I don't know I mean I, I've got the feeling you know you can get away with a lot in another language even if your grammar is a bit shaky if it's not perfect but I think the two things that stand out for most native speakers when they listen to other people speaking their language is the pronunciation and intonation, as well as, you know, Mm. the the, the combinations of words. People are going to say, what did you say? That's not the way we say it. We say, oh, the grammar, Mm. as long as it's understandable, we can get away with it to to a certain extent, to a certain extent. But... Mm. Let, let, let's think back about the, the exam itself and all those topics that, that might come up. There, there is a, such a variety of possible topics, but being positive, of course, we know what to expect. They're well known. Is it going to be in the field of education or is it going to be something to do with technology or to do with leadership or whatever it's going to be? Um, yeah. I mean, even on, you know, on, on all a lot of places on, on the IELTS uh, podcast website. I mean, you, as you know, I mean, there's a lot of um, information about that. Just check it out, all of you, and 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 see the list of possible topics. And also, I'm, on the website, there are you know useful expressions to use for each one. I yeah. mean, no, and, and knowing these topics can can take us all over the place. I mean, well. I think these days we we can't really complain or can we because there's too much of out there isn't there I mean you've got yeah. online sources you've got newspapers you've got magazines you've got um stuff which might be very serious and academic to stuff that might be not so serious you've got videos you've got youtube videos we've got I mean we're never more than just a click or two away from from vocabulary and 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 yes. we can take it and learn from ourselves. I mean, you know, apart from all those, I mean, sometimes when I look at more traditional sources, like, you know, English language teaching courses, the textbooks and stuff, they're fine, they're good, they're very professional, they're well done. But sometimes you think, mm, it's not what I'm looking for. If my student really wants to be able to participate in meetings at work, I'm going to look for something else, you know, perhaps yeah. there's a website, you know, professional stuff, giving tips on how to participate in a meeting and yeah, yeah and often you get it it seems i mean things even in the publishing world of english language books i mean they, they look out of date after a few years because we often change the expressions you know things are changing so fast yeah this is um, this is such a good point rob like yeah um this is what I, I always did with my students as well. It's like, okay, mm-hmm. fair enough, we've got the textbooks, it's better than nothing. But exactly. if you really want to take it to the next level, you look for the same material that the English speakers are going to be using. That's um, true. That's you true. know, and yeah. like you just said, fair enough, we could 
possibly extract a little bit of vocabulary about how to conduct a meeting. But if we find yeah. a website or a YouTube video that's designed for literally for like English speakers, native English speakers, exactly. we're going to be able to extract so much more. And it's going to be like so uh, incredibly more realistic and practical. And, mm -hmm. and also because of that, and because it's probably from an industry source rather than going through a teacher, because it's direct from the industry source, we're going to get a wealth of vocabulary terms. And even then, it, it's up to you as the student to extract that. Oh, okay, that's a useful phrasal, phrase, uh, phrasal verb. Oh, that's a, that's a beautiful collocation. I'm going to lift that directly. And just one yeah. other thing, while we're on the topic of topics, mm -hmm. I would also suggest that a student find their own blind spots. So I know that a lot of students might struggle with finance and marketing vocabulary. Mm -hmm. uh, so if I was that kind of student, I'd start going to, you know, financialtimes.com or I don't know, uh, Dow Jones and start just reading the business press. Uh, or true. likewise, if I had a weakness about, um, I don't know, education vocabulary, mm -hmm. you can easily find um, a wealth of information online and just go into that topic, go deep, as, as you mentioned, go deep on that topic for a week or two, uh, make some lists, get that vocabulary in context, I think, as, as uh, yep. you're about to say, and yep. then yep. Um, start incorporating it into your own active uh, vocabulary. You have well said, yes. I couldn't agree with you more, Ben, actually. That's very well said, very well said. I like that, I like that, yeah. because that's, the, that's what we're aiming at. I mean, I tell you what would get me in the exam, and I shouldn't because I have worked quite a bit with um, uh, kind of scientifically inclined students over the years, but mm -hmm. uh, perhaps because I got um, an overdose of it, those topics related to the environment. I know it's with us. I know I, I, I follow it to some extent. You know, I followed what was going on in Glasgow. Uh, yeah, I'm a, big fan, I'm a big fan of Greta. I think she's the best thing since Coca-Cola. But I mean, at the same time, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I turn myself off when it gets into all those uh, scientific expressions to some extent. I mean, that would get me. I mean, if I had to you know, worry about a topic that I wasn't too sure of, I mean, I, that topic, I think, comes up in part two and then leads on to part three, you know, something like, describe an environmental problem your country or your city is facing or, or something like that, you know. Okay, fine, all right. Um, uh, part three would obviously lead into naturally some kind of discussion about the environment and, and issues related to it in general. And, and I just said, it's not, it's, not, it's not something that really excites me. It's not something that I, you know, I, I generally talk about from day to day. I mean, I listen and read about it, but I wouldn't mm -hmm. actually be um, opening conversations about it. Um, so I've got to get familiar first, maybe with the basic stuff. I mean, if I'm trying to start almost from the beginning there, I mean, I might go to one of these excellent um, online dictionaries there are these days. I'm not yeah. going to drop any names. I mean, just... I mean, I would advise anybody to look in through Google, Google, you know, online dictionaries, the best ones, and, and you'll get five or six. Some are British, some are American. I'm not going to say you should go for one or the other. Try both. They're wonderful mm. things because they give you information about the word, what part of speech is it, is it an adjective, an adverb or whatever, how it's used. I mean, real use from real sources. They give you examples mm. and you've got to, to work on those things. I mean, noting their grammar, how they relate to each other and then you know looking at the context words that are similar or opposite to it you know synonyms etc yeah and then the collocations you're going to get that in the dictionary anyway and through your reading and listening yeah. and, and and also idiomatic expressions i mean i i did a bit of stuff on this the other day just just to, to be honest to prepare for for this chat with you ben actually yeah them. <laughs> and, <laughs> and this is what i came up come, come up with it didn't take me that long actually okay i took a few shortcuts but this is what i've got and i want to share it with everybody so i started out with the online dictionary and of course it gave me the, the basic stuff it gave me let me check it here let me i got it noted down somewhere here here we go um okay um environment uh, which is a noun, environmental, the adjective, environmentally, the, the adverb, and, and, and a big word here, a very abstract word, environmentalism, which I had to say it twice before I could pronounce it myself, environmentalism. And, um, and then, then, you know, I, I, I checked out through the dictionary and through uh, reading a couple of things, 
common collocations that go with those three words. I mean, adjectives that go with them, adjectives with nouns, for example. Um, there are loads of them. I find about 25, um, wow. you know, healthy environment, hostile environment, a challenging environment, diverse environment, urban environment. I could go on forever. <laughs> I mean, it, it didn't take me long. I find them at least 25. It's not that difficult to find them. I mean, a lot of them, of course, related to topics that may not be directly related to the environment as such, rather the environment in a, in a different sense, almost psychological, you know, the, the yeah. environment in, in the office or in the classroom, you know, a, a good working environment or whatever it, might, whatever it might be. We could use the word environment in so many cases. Uh, different context maybe okay that, that that's my direct route you know the dictionary route it's quick yeah um, but it also of course as we're saying there's also that kind of steady build up from reading listening watching taking notes you've got to be all eyes you've got to be as they say sometimes in this country you've got to be like a fly you've got to be mosca you got, you got to have eyes in the back of your head and pick everything up that's around you. You've got to absorb a lot of stuff, you know? Yeah. And, but, and you, yeah, sorry, Ben, yeah. What I was mean? just going to say, I like that idea of, the, of going to the dictionary and then you've got it all there. It's in perfect English. And sometimes they'll have the, the phonetic alphabet next to it so you can have a guess at how it's pronounced. If, I mean, you can always use an app, as we mentioned at the beginning, yeah. to get the pronunciation correct. But if you're going to a dictionary, um, mm. as, as Rob just mentioned, um, you can make your own list. And then this is what sort of like, it's, it's that one step better than just sitting there in front of YouTube and absorbing the information, which is better That's than true. nothing. But if you're with the yeah. dictionary, you're writing it down. Hopefully you're checking the pronunciation, you're making mm. your list and then looking for opportunities, uh, exactly like Rob said, of how you could use it. And just going exactly. back to that first question of like, describe an environmental problem your city or country is facing mm. and environment is a very common topic and uh, not just in the speaking but also for the writing questions and probably and also for the reading ones so Absolutely. It, it's not a bad idea at all just to sort of like go deep on this and then as you start getting further away from from the topic of climate change it's like okay we've got the the collocation hostile environment when could i use mm. that well, I probably talk that use that if I'm talking about my work, which is, again, as we've discussed in previous podcasts, that's also a common topic. So, you know, if, if you could start looking for like dual uses of, or of, of different ways you can use the words you've used. And then also just one last tip before I hand back to Rob, when you do get these words, try and incorporate them into your active vocabulary um, as soon as possible, because the sooner they're in there, then the more likely it is that you're going to to remember them. And exactly. as, as we were saying, I think you were going to mention like a load of verbs around the topic of environment. Exactly, exactly. I mean, well, you, you, you really hit the truth there. I mean, you know, ben, it, it's an old story, but I mean, years and years ago when I began teaching, people would say, you know, you, you, with vocabulary, you've got to see it. We visit it again, and as teachers, we know we've got to come back to that vocabulary because what I taught today, you're going to forget tomorrow. Mm. We, we've got, you've got to, re, to, to read over it. You've got to work at it. Uh, yeah, the verbs. I mean, wow, I made a list. I mean, it's, it's amazing, actually. Verbs that collocate with environment. Um, uh, threaten. I mean, let's be negative. Threaten the environment. Damage, endanger, destroy. And let's be a bit positive now save conserve protect or even a little bit wider than that because th th let's build it up from there and you know take steps to measure or take measures to protect or conserve mm. you know so i'm thinking okay how can i think of an example there ah the government should take direct measures to protect the environment because and then wow I'm mm -hmm. getting into something a bit more and as you say wonderful because we're going to be reading it very often in the reading test yeah um writing about it possibly in task two of the of the writing part and um speaking about it as well obviously not all three at the same time that would be magic wouldn't it? i mean <laughs> how was the exam great i got environment three times and why impossible <laughs> That would be out of the question, right? Or, or, or would it? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it would be interesting. Yeah. Uh, just, just to interrupt again, um, I just want to re uh, 
highlight what Robert did there while he was talking about uh, when he was just giving the list. He thought of like an example of how he could use that phrase. And he came up with the government is taking steps to protect the, the environment. And that just like, it, it's, it's straightforward. But doing that is just like another little activity you could do. And then you want to get feedback as to if that sentence you said is right, but just applying it to your hometown, to your situation. And then it just gets you closer to being able to talk about it that specific topic if you did do it and likewise you can't yeah i mean you can also just you can do this not only with environment but for example crime you look up a, a load of verbs related to crime and then write out sentences or say them about crime in your city or in your country and if you don't know if your mind goes blank that's perfect because now you've got um, a kick up the bum so to speak mm -hmm. but now you've got um initiative to go and research about crime in your country. And as we've been saying, it's just a few clicks away and you've got the answers, you know, and especially if you're finding the material in authentic, if you're finding authentic native English speaker material talking about your country, then it's even better because you're further away from, from the textbooks. And it's, it's not just verbs. We could do this with nouns, the species, mm. habitat, ecosystem, uh, exactly. uh, adjectives mm. and mm. noun combinations as well. I like exactly. that. Could you give us a few exactly. examples? Well, you've got things like, you know, um, okay, you, you mentioned species and habitat. Okay, um, endangered species, uh, natural habitat, and, and maybe even, you know, um, we got a verb and then a, a, a noun phrase after, you know, we have to do take steps to save critically endangered species. I mean, build it up, make it as complicated as you can, because that is the way that English works and the way that we work when we're, we're, we're thinking of you know, describing these things. I mean, but mm -hmm. it's just a start. I mean, we could go on to, you know, the, the old favorites, global warming, climate change and stuff like that. And, and again, those same verbs are gonna come up, aren't they? And others too. How do we uh, fight it? How do we tackle the, these serious issues mm. and, and and as well as you know the the the, the things of our, our time you know do we uh, do you recycle what are you doing for the environment do you reduce recycle reuse etc i mean mm. um, and, and and we're talking about things like you know um renewable energy sustainable growth i mean these combinations of words are so common these days that we're calling them you know that's what a collocation is a, a, yeah. a very high probability that two or more words will go together that's what it is exactly and, i mean an example uh, 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 oh yeah i mean uh, we've, we've got quite a few examples we could think of it well, I, I wrote a sentence here um in my country there are some ngos that are trying to tackle the negative <laughs> impact of global warming on the ecosystem for example uh, one group of people are brief, you know, planting mm -hmm. trees or whatever it might be. Ah, but don't forget, don't forget the, the, the idiomatic stuff. I mean, the examiners love that. I don't know why. I mean, things <laughs> like, you know, I mean, hey, how green are you? I mean, you know, go green. You know? How are you trying to reduce your carbon footprint? I mean, do we really talk like that? Um, some people do, I guess. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but this, this reminds me, it's like, Fair enough, it's not everyday spe um, speech where we talk like this, but if you think about it as a job interview, you, exactly. you, you're in that position to impress. So exactly. we've got to pull out the best words that we can and mm -hmm. that we know confidently how to use. Uh, exactly. And don't be afraid of, of using these. Like Robert said, this is what the examiner just loves. You know, if you they can give them these, but accurately, you yeah, know. Yeah. You don't yeah, want to be yeah, talking yeah. about, uh, I don't know, if you get a question about crime and you're talking about the carbon footprint of criminals, that's probably not the best, <laughs> the best <laughs> way. <laughs> and so remember, do use them in, in, in the context. context. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no. Okay. Yep. So um, anything else before we, before we finish that, Rob? No, I think also, I mean, you know, it, 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 
I'd like to just go over again what you said. I mean, I think it's so important. I mean, what, what's good for speaking will also be good for all parts of the test, the reading and the and uh, and the writing. I mean, um, in particular, writing perhaps. I mean, you know, perhaps a bit more formal in the writing when you're trying to write these beautifully constructed sentences but it's time very well spent working on vocabulary it really is the key to everything in my opinion much more much more than even 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 the grammatical side in in my particular opinion yeah yeah absolutely and i think as well i, I may have mentioned this in the past but it's like one of those um quick quick win you can get mm. by boosting your vocabulary because as we said it spills over into the other areas mm -hmm. and to get the same amount of improvement by working on your grammar or your pronunciation is probably going to take a little bit longer than yeah. if you work on your vocabulary. And I think in the future, we'll probably look at different methods for acquiring this vocabulary. We've touched mm -hmm. on a few, but just mm -hmm. to give you a few from the top of my head, which I'm actually using now to learn mm -hmm. um, Hungarian and just mm -hmm. using a ton of flashcards and oh. yeah and i've got the most random vocabulary ever uh, about <laughs> in hungarian and it's not so practical at the moment however it's kind of like just the building blocks because i know from being a language professional that this is where i'm going to get the quick wings and the best use of yeah. my time especially when i'm starting out and then next time when i hear a sentence i can maybe pick out a few terms and i get the idea you know whereas if i did a couple of hours studying the grammar it's going to take mm. forever to to understand if i if i obviously don't know the words so mm. and yeah, i say Hunga hungarian is very difficult to learn i say i mean it's very difficult complex oh my word mm. and you know what as, as well rob when i told my friends that i was learning hungarian they all just mm -hmm. cracked up you know, and I was like, that wasn't a that wasn't a joke. I'm seriously learning Hungarian, and they're like, oh, okay, sorry, all right, good luck. You know, but uh, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. I'll well, I'll, I'll keep you updated on that. Um, Gulash so and Django Reinhardt. I don't, I don't know. I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And just one last thing. I made goulash the other week, and my girlfriend, she's Hungarian. She's like, oh, what did you make? I was like, goulash, and she's like. Really? You really? Really? That this is goulash? And I was like, okay. <laughs> you, you opened a tin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so I think, um, is there anything else you want to uh, no, finish no, before we finish? No, that's, that's fine. I think that's great. That's great. We'll, we'll... Super. All right, then. Well, um, yeah. As you know, we're coming to an end. Thank you very much for listening. And I just want to say another word for our sponsor. And where with this app, as we were mentioned throughout the podcast, when you're learning new vocabulary, it's also good to get some feedback on the pronunciation. And especially if it's new vocabulary, because you don't want to learn the word uh, you don't want to guess how it's pronounced and then spend the rest of your life pronouncing it incorrectly. So it's worth just to take a few seconds, a few minutes, maybe just get that pronunciation, get it right first time, and then avoid those fossilized errors. And Elsa app is elsaspeak.com, uh, where you can download the app. That's a great app to help with your pronunciation. And as I said, if you go to ieltspodcast.com forward slash Elsa, you can get the pro pack for a year for $27, or you can get the pro pack for a lifetime for $75. And the 75 one is the 85% discount. And just one last thing, if you are struggling with the IELTS exam, please get in contact. We can help you. Every week, we are helping students pass the exam. We've got success stories of students who've been using our course, who've been getting feedback, improving their essays. And we've got courses for your writing score to jump to a band seven or it's free. That's the, the course Alexis is on at the moment. And these essays are improving every single day. It's, it's a lovely site. And we've also got the Speaking Confidence course. So if you go to ieltspodcast.com, you can view them all there. So thank you very much for listening and good luck. IELTSpodcast.com.